Hey guys, so it's Joey. Apologies for not getting a video out yesterday. I um, was not very well. I've somehow managed to poison myself with something I ate on my birthday and I was suffering really badly yesterday and I'm not great today so I won't be appearing on camera while I feel so ill so I thought I would try and get one video out that I thought to do which is about the tarot and I wanted to do this video, I wanted to show my tarot set and have a little bit of a talk about um, tarot cards and show my deck and talk about my deck and talk about my experiences. I find the history of tarot quite interesting. Um, the, some of the earliest cards um, were used from the 14th century. And originally tarot cards seemed to be used more like playing cards. And it's only in the 18th century that um, spiritual meaning and interpretations started to be utilized on a, on a general scale. So I find that really interesting. I mean there's a whole load more you can go research and obviously there's loads and loads of information. But I don't want to go into that too much because I want to share my personal experiences. What you're looking at is my tarot cloth which I wrap my cards in and read my cards on. This was from Tesco believe it or not and I really like it with the hummingbirds. Oh, green and relaxing. So the tarot I currently have <coughs> is the Shadowscapes Tarot by Stephanie Pumonlaw and Barbara Moore. I'll show you quickly inside the book. It's not great because all the pictures in the book are in black and white. But they have the meanings and there's some descriptions where you can depict meaning from as well. And the little pictures in there are quite cute. Little toadstools and leaves and things. It's a shame that this isn't in colour. There's a couple of little things I wish they'd, they'd changed slightly about um, the book mainly. I wish the tarot cards were a little bit bigger because the pictures are so so beautiful. But I wish they'd made it a little bit bigger and I'm actually going to order one of them, either one of these tarot cards or the possibly her print of Virgo from the Shadowscapes website. Uh, I believe it's www.shadowscapes.tarot.com. Uh, I will have a look afterwards and put the link at the bottom. So this will be my fourth tarot set. The very first tarot set I bought was when I was uh, very new to everything and I, I was thinking along the lines of uh, I should have a tarot set and going with my head rather than what I felt and the first tarot set I had, I had it for the grand total of three days because I just couldn't get on with it and I ended up giving it to someone else who was really interested in it. And then I went back and bought a, a tarot set which was the Druid Wicker tarot set which I felt like I connected with and I had that tarot set for very many many years. And it was a good honest tarot set, it always told me the, what I needed to know rather than what I wanted to hear. And as is the way with a lot of the things that come across my path, once its time was up it disappeared. Uh, into the attic of my mother's house and has been lost and never to see again. Um, I've got another fairy tarot that I sometimes use which is a little bit darker than this tarot set and then this one. So I currently have two in use. I came across the pictures for this online and I had a look on her website and I immediately was connected with the pictures. I will sh show you in a minute the first one I came across and talk about some of the symbolism and stuff but I came across pictures of hers online and I just found them completely and utterly amazing. Um, it was actually the death card that I came across first and I will talk about that in a second separately because it is just amazing. 
So firstly I'll just show you the back of these cards and you can see that on my card is a piece of rose quartz, rough tumble stone. And these are the back. I love all the colours. I mean, I don't know how, if you can see, there are animals in the spiral. I love the little foxes, I think they're great. <clears throat> foxes are one of my favourite animals. So, put the rose quartz back on, and this is how they are wrapped up. I wrap them in this material with the rose quartz always on top and this this is still clean and cleansed from the very first time I cleaned and cleansed it so <clears throat> now the very first card I saw or picture I saw was the death card now this is awfully bright for a death card and that's part of what I love about it. There you go, death card. Let's zoom in even more. Have a look. Once the camera decides it wants to play ball, I'll talk while it's zooming in. A lot of other tarot decks um, sort of do the very archetypical death card. Gloom and doom and skulls and skeletons and everything that most people would probably usually associate with death. And that's fair enough, you, you can understand why, but this death card is about rebirth, death and rebirth, which is what the tarot card symbolises. It's, it's not usually physical death in a reading, it's the end of one cycle and the beginning of something else. And a lot of other tarot sets leave out the, the, that important part, the beginning of something else. Look how beautiful this is with the phoenix. And you have aspects of death in it, there are dead branches, but then there's aspects of rebirth and new life. I mean, the colours are fantastic, the colours are some of my favourites. Um, but I just think, with the irises as well, and you have aspects of the shadow around the corners, there is the shadow of death around the corners but then the light and flame of rebirth and I thought that was the most wonderful tarot death card that I've ever seen and it was the first one I connected with which is strange for me and there's a couple more that I've picked out that I think are really beautiful from the major <sighs> Arcana, right this is the world I just, it's indescribably beautiful. I saw these pictures and I, I was nose to monitor screen with my computer because I just felt the power coming off them. I thought they were absolutely wonderful. And then this is the Empress. With her circle of butterflies. I, I don't know, I can't even truly explain it, but I, I just connected with them. And that's often the way to, to buy tarot sets, is find a tarot set that you connect with. Now this is the Queen of Wands, and I'm going to show you the Queen of Wands, because the Queen of Wands represents me in my tarot readings. Foxies, I love the foxes. It always has represented me in every tarot set I've ever had, Queen of Wands. So I've got one of each of the suits to show you and talk about the uh, the colours and the symbolism. So we'll start off with wands, seeing as we've had a wands. Right. Wands on this side of the sea is uh, fire in the tarot decks. Some places they represent air and they're, they're switched with swords. But for me, they are fire, 
although oddly enough on my altar they're the other way around but within the tarot I just have always seen them as being fire so you can see the beautiful fiery colours, this, the, even autumny colours this is my favourite set of ones uh, a suit, sorry um, I love foxes little toadstools we all know how crazy I am with little toadstools all over my altar and the autumn leaves falling and then you've got like, if you uh, if it'll show it I don't think it's going to ok, how about if I put you down and Can you see the little fairies, the little elementals and the, the they're in nearly all of them. And then we have pentacles. Now the pentacles in this set are really lovely and I was really glad because in an awful lot of tarot sets the pentacles seem to be lacking. Like people have done them as an afterthought, like they're boring. Like they make the whole set less magical than the rest. And understandably pentacles is earth and home based and prosperity and all that things but there's no need for them to be boring and in this set they have all the greens and purples and they have dragons and chameleons they've actually made um, the chameleons or old geckos into I think yeah it's chameleons into little fairy ones on this one isn't that great so there's that okay and then we have water cups, all of an underwater theme. This is a sort of mermaid. This is the Eight of Cups, and the eight cups within um, this set have the most beautiful shades of blue, and it's all very deep, emotive, mysterious. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better representation of water, or any of the suits. In fact, that's why I love it so much. And finally, we have swords which in this pack is air, all the beautiful shades of um, purple, silvery purple, lilacs. This is the queen with her bow. And you have butterflies and other air creatures throughout the pack, swans down there. Okay, so those were some just to show you the interpretations of the elements within this pack, Ooh, which is my pack, which is my favourite pack at the minute. Okay. So apologies if I might not do any more videos. This might be it for today. I really am not feeling very well. I don't know what I've done to myself, but my stomach is tearing me to pieces, basically. Um, there we go so I was talking yet the other day about um, divination readings on birthdays so I thought I'd mention that briefly there are many times when um, you'll read in books that are a really good time to do divination for yourself full moons um, Samhain because Samhain is the beginning of the, the witch's year which always makes a whole lot more sense to me than January, but still, I guess that's why I'm a witch. Um, but I was going to mention that you can do a tarot reading on your birthday or the day after. Unfortunately for me, it'll have to probably be today, which is, is lo lost it a little bit, but I, I just wasn't well enough to do it yesterday. Because that is the first day after your birthday, or on your birthday, is either um, depending on what time you're born, obviously. It's the first full day after your date of birth, so that would be a great time for a reading of divination for the year because it is technically the beginning of your personal new year, if that makes any sense. That's how I've always seen it and I um, thought it could be particularly potent to do it that way. I also was thinking about um, the symbolism of making a wish on your birthday with birthday candles. And I was thinking to myself, wouldn't it be fantastic to make your own birthday candle? 
course the opportunity for me has now passed unfortunately with me being unwell but if you made your own candle from the wax you could put all your favorite um, herbs in there, your favorite scents, maybe a lock of your hair, like a little bit of your hair or a little bit of your nail just to make it um, tied to you. Then you could put like a little bit of a glitter of fairy dust in there or your favorite oils, all things that are deeply personal to you and then you could light that on your birthday and make a wish. And I thought this was a really lovely idea and it was something I wanted to do and I wanted to make a video of but it just didn't happen. So I thought I'd mention that as an idea. So there we go. Um, as for the tarot, I could probably do another video in depth about information about the tarot because this was just mainly just showing you mine. Can you see that? You can almost see the power coming off that rose quartz. That's incredible. Vroom, vroom, vroom. So let's wrap them up just to show you. Do, do, do. This is a bit of a, a loose wrapping because I'm doing it one handed. There you go. So. Okay. Now, tarot is something to be treated with respect. Is it something I've never found tarot particularly frightening. Some people do. I, I'm not entirely sure why. I can understand people finding other types of divination quite worrying, but tarot has always felt like coming home to me. And it might be that you feel this way about tarot, or it might not be. When you're new, you have to try all the different ones. I mean, I've said before, and I will probably say again, that the first type of divination I ever used, without even knowing what I was doing really, was the pendulum with the silver necklace. But tarot, and I always loved playing cards. I always loved shuffling them and dealing them. And I couldn't really understand why or explain why. And tarot has always been something that really attracted me, and I really connected with it. Unlike runes, which I can use really, really well in spell work, but for divination, I just get nowhere. It's like being blocked. But tarot, especially when you found your right tarot set, for me anyway, has always been a really enlightening experience. And tarot cards have always, to me, sort of told you what you need to know. So if you need telling off, they'll tell you off. Um, if the gnome doesn't, of course. Uh, but um, there are many, 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 many forms of tarot, very many different colours, different themes. There, you know, you can get anything from gothic to fluffy to fairy to unicorn to everything in between. I mean, some of them are quite odd. Some of the I've seen some pretty odd tarot sets. Some tarot sets which might be aimed at young men. If that gives you any indication, but this was this is definitely my favourite tarot set that I've ever owned. It's, it's so beautiful and, and I loved it so so much. And even if you don't have a local um, pagany or holistic shop where you can go um, and look at the tarot cards yourself, these days you can go online and Google them and find all the you know just type your interest in so say you're interested in gothic things and you want a gothic set you could type in gothic tarot and usually online you can find websites which will show you one or two of the cards if not the whole set I mean this set the whole set is available as prints so you could see all of the pictures online and I did that and, and connected with them now I'm just going to show you two little nail varnishes that I got the other day for my birthday which weren't in my other video. They're new. Right, what is this called? Dream. This is a accessorized 3D glitter polish in Dream. My Tesco started stocking them and I'm in trouble because they were all glittery and shiny and lovely. And this is just a multi glitter. I don't think this has a name. This next one, I think it's just Sparkle. It's shade 33. It's a shame it doesn't have a name. I mean, look at that. It's beautiful. Like fairy shimmer. It's gorgeous. So I just thought I'd show you those two quickly on the end. <laughs> Aren't they nice? Yep. So 
that's just a brief video. I'm sure if it's a bit all over the place, it's just I'm not great feeling well, so I thought I would just do a quick video just so I've put something out there. I might talk more about her at length in a different video, in a more informational video, history of maybe. So that's it for today. I'm going to go rest up now. Many blessings.